All right, let's pick up on this load shedding issue. You heard the Premier of Gauteng just uh, bemoaning load shedding. But of course we know if we don't have load shedding, that could risk the grid collapsing completely. But nevertheless, it is extremely frustrating to live with and dangerous, as the Premier explained, how crime has spiralled due to these persistent blackouts. So this evening we're on stage six again. Winter, of course, has hardly begun. At the same time, the Electricity Minister wants to relook at the target set for decommissioning old coal-fired power plants. So, with Cabinet having met to look at this issue yesterday, what are the best options going forward? I'm joined now by Hartmut Winkler, Professor of Physics and Energy at the University of Johannesburg. Prof, thank you so much for joining us in studio. So, we're on stage six, uh, and there's been so much debate on, ah, oh, we're actually on more than stage six. Um, and I've seen that ESCOM has started issuing, saying, uh, 6,200 megawatts had to be shed, but then in brackets saying it's load shedding stage six and load curtailment stages one and two. Um, I'm not sure if you have a view on that. Um, I suppose, really, whether we call it six or eight or a bit of load shedding and a bit of curtailment, the truth is uh, we have less and less available power, don't we? Yes, exactly. Uh, when that story was going around about the stage eight, we ha we're short of seven gigawatts of power. That's typically stage seven. So I think stage seven would be more accurate. But then again, stage six is defined as what we are experiencing. So yes, they're just cutting some extra power somewhere else. So they, Eskom has a couple of options, but you're quite right. They need to cut power. Uh, you cannot have a situation where the demand or the use exceeds what the, the power stations can produce because otherwise uh, the system collapses. And, and do you share the view that really load shedding is annoying and awful and the massive economic implications and the crime implications, it is better uh, than the grid collapsing? Because that oh, would yeah. mean what? Yes, well, well, the grid collapsing means uh, anything between a couple of days and two weeks of no power at all, depending on, on where you live. So it's, it's effectively stage 16 load shedding uh, for a couple of days. Right. Yeah. So stage 16 is no power, I yeah. would imagine. <laughs> One of the issues that's been raised is that we are eating into our safety margins. That there's this sort of cushion where... Uh, ESCOM and I would imagine all the engineers get a little bit edgy uh, when we are sort of skirting too close to, to the limits. Just explain that a little more for us. Uh, yes, uh, there's an, of course an enormous amount of pressure on ESCOM, on government and so on to try and keep the stages of load shedding as low as possible, not only just the economics but just the, the public pressure as a whole. Uh, but they have to uh, stick to their job. They cannot get too close to these margins. Uh, Technically, they, they have the situation under control, but what we don't want is a situation where very suddenly a whole lot of breakages occur that demand an instant increasing of the stage uh, of load shedding by two levels or so, and, and nobody's paying attention. So they just need to pay more attention. I think normally one wouldn't worry too much about it because breakdowns would be relatively rare, but unfortunately we now live in a time where breakdowns are very common. They, they just happen on an ongoing basis, and this constant breaking down getting them fixed, putting them up again and seeing how long they go. We mm. just have a, a, a... South Africa is almost entirely dependent on, on its coal plants for its electricity. Uh, almost 80% of, uh, of the electricity comes from the coal plants and if those don't work properly then we're in big trouble and we know that now. So we've heard that the electricity minister, Jose Enzo Ramakopa, is sort of mulling the idea of maybe um, holding off on decommissioning some of those old power stations. I mean, they're not going to be decommissioned tomorrow anyway, but the reality is they are pretty much past their lifetime, and which is one of the reasons why I think we're seeing them breaking down so often. It seems his view is, let's just keep them going as long as possible. At least a little bit of power intermittently is better than nothing. But it does seem like it's going to cost a lot of money. Do you have a view on what might be the best route? Do you think he's got a point? Uh OK, where, where we're sitting at the moment is that we, if for the next two years or so, very little new uh, generating power is going to come online. There's a couple of wind and solar plants being built, and then a lot of initiatives. Uh, Gauteng was mentioned. Gauteng is planning to build a solar farm for uh, uh, 800 megawatts, which is quite big, but uh, it's not going to make more than about one stage of load shedding difference. So ultimately, uh, those things are all happening, but they're not coming fast enough, and they're not happening on a large enough scale uh, to really make a dramatic dent 
in the situation. So it, I think the main thing that needs to happen now is, is to come up with a proper plan. I'm a little bit worried about the minister saying that, yes, that's what we're going to do before they've actually looked and costed and looked at the, the time uh, things will take with everything else. What we really need is, is, is an updated electricity plan. We're working at the moment on one uh, uh, that was uh, um, passed in, in 2019, uh, which gives certain dates for when uh, certain coal power stations will be decommissioned. Uh, I think people shouldn't worry that any is, is going to be decommissioned over the next uh, year or so. The situation is too tight in any case. It, it's, it's not uh, uh, on, on the plan itself. Uh, but the, the medium-term plan is that, yes, uh, the, the coal plus power stations, one by one, would be uh, shut down and their place would be taken by new plants, mostly uh, solar and wind plants, but uh, initially they were also planning uh, new coal plants. I don't think that will happen. They're just simply not going to get the finance for that. And uh, Nuclear plans are not really on the horizon, and even if, if it was, those take 10 years or more to build. So ultimately, in, in the medium term, all one can really do is, is, is build more solar and wind or bring in those gas ships. And those gas ships were supposed to come in as an emergency, but uh, there's all sorts of problems associated with those as well, largely uh, cost implications. Yeah, because the, the original term was going to be 20 years, which is very yes. questionable for an yes. emergency. Yes. Um, and also some environmental concerns, mm. and those are, are not uh, being sufficiently dealt with. Yes. So, you know, we, we've been warned that winter's going to be really, really bad. We're sitting with stage six every yes. evening, and no real sign that this is going to change, you know. Mm. Um, Possibly over the weekend, we'll see a slight easing as there's less demand uh, because everyone's off work or a lot of people are off work. But what do you anticipate this winter? And I ask that because I know that um, they do tend to cut down their maintenance schedule in winter, mm. if I'm not mistaken. So yes. there'll be less planned maintenance, which may just mean that things are a little easier because they know demand is high. What do you think we're going to be in for? Uh Yes, yes, that's, that will help slightly. But on the other hand, we are in a worse situation than last year uh, for a variety of reasons. The main one being that the, the Kusile power station is, is only operating now at, at a third of what it's supposed to be, with a one unit not quite finished yet. I hope they finish that soon, uh, one of the six units, and three of its units uh, out of uh, action simply because that chimney stack collapsed. And... Uh, that was supposed to take two years to get it fixed properly. Now they've managed to bypass these, uh, uh, these environmental regulations, and now they say, yes, it will be finished by the end of the year. Have they actually bypassed that, or are they still applying to? Uh, uh, they, they got permission to... Apply uh, to uh, bypass. Uh, to, uh, yeah, to, be, to basically be able to, to, uh, to do that. Yeah. So they, they've got uh, permission to do that, but it's still going to take a year or so until that's actually done. The other problem is that when everyone's talking about a big project like uh, uh, the Chris Sealer plant, it's already taken more than double as long to build uh, uh, mm. uh, what it was supposed to. I really, I'd be very pleasantly surprised if, if this repair job really does get finished at the end of the year, which I think is what the minister is talking about when he says that, yes, by the end of the year we'll be... He's uh, hoping that that's yes, going to be that's the of part of the solution. No. Is there anything, you say that the plan needs an update, is there anything... Uh, and there are a lot of measures being taken, lots of plans being made, trying to get you know, these new alternative energy things through the process of setting up as quickly as possible. Is there anything more that government could be doing that you're going, oh, why aren't they doing that? Is there anything, or do you think they're kind of doing everything they can at this point? Uh, at the moment, there's not much else that can be done in real terms. There's small things which may slightly improve the situation, but we are dealing with a, really a shortfall of uh, six gigawatts, 6,000 megawatts, six stages of load shedding. Uh, to come up with that somewhere or other is going to be difficult. The other thing is that we don't know what we're going to face in the next year or so. We didn't know this time this year that, that Kusile was going to have this disastrous loss of three of its units. Uh, who knows what else is going to happen? Um, we, as you said, we don't have much of an, a, a margin of error. And I think we're just going to have to get used to a situation where load shedding is going to be part of our lives, probably for, I would say, for the next five years. Uh, the best I think we can hope for is that this time next year we are more or less where we are now, because until now, the last few years, it's just been getting worse and worse. Uh, I would be, feel more comfortable if the minister was, uh, would actually admit to this situation and say that, look, if we... I guess he can't say that for him because he's a, a politician. Yeah. But yeah. if he actually told us that if, 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 if he can just hold the situation and stop it from getting worse, that that is, is the aim. And then after that, 
uh, somewhere towards the end of next year. That's when uh, a couple of things can start. Uh, it will probably be ready, which will wow. ease the situation. So, it won't stop lo loaching, but it will ease the situation. So you think five more years of load yes. shedding will be lucky if we can hold the pattern we're in for 18 months and then a slow, slow improvement, improvement. from there. That's what I, 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 that's You're I not see cheering me up this <laughs> evening at all. But anyway, I appreciate your frankness yeah. and thank you very much for coming into studio. That, of course, is University of Johannesburg Professor Hartmut Winkler. You're watching SA tonight.